In the quaint town of Willowbrook, nestled amidst towering pines and whispering winds, there stood an old, ivy-covered mansion. The mansion had long been abandoned, its windows shattered, and its walls weathered by time. Locals spoke of eerie tales that whispered through the streets like a chilling breeze, but none were as chilling as the legend of the mirror's reflection. According to the town's folklore, the mansion once belonged to the affluent Montague family, known for their obsession with antiquities and peculiar artifacts. It was said that Lady Eloise Montague, the last surviving member, possessed a mirror of mysterious origin, one that held a sinister secret. The mirror, an ornate Victorian piece with intricate golden frames and beveled edges, had been acquired by Lady Montague during her travels abroad. Rumors swirled that the mirror had the power to reflect more than just one's physical appearance, that it could show glimpses of the future or reveal hidden truths. But these were mere whispers compared to the darker tales that soon unfolded. One stormy night, Emily, a curious teenager with a penchant for adventure, dared her friends to explore the abandoned mansion. Ignoring the warnings of the townsfolk, they ventured into the mansion's decaying halls, guided only by flickering candlelight and the thrill of the unknown. As they entered what appeared to be Lady Montague's study, Emily's gaze fell upon the mirror. Despite its age, the mirror's surface gleamed as if polished yesterday. Drawn by an inexplicable force, Emily approached it cautiously. Her friends, hesitant but intrigued, watched as she tentatively reached out to touch its cold, smooth surface. Suddenly, the mirror shimmered, casting an ethereal glow that bathed the room in an otherworldly light. Emily's reflection began to distort, contorting into grotesque shapes that twisted her features into a visage of horror. Her friends screamed in terror, but Emily seemed entranced, unable to look away from her own distorted reflection. In that moment, whispers filled the room, whispers that spoke of ancient curses and vengeful spirits trapped within the mirror's depths. Shadows danced along the walls, growing darker with each passing second. The air grew thick with an icy chill, suffocating and oppressive. Desperate to break the spell, Emily's friends tried to pry her away from the mirror, but she remained fixated, oblivious to their pleas. As they struggled, the mansion itself seemed to come alive, its walls groaning and creaking as if protesting the intrusion. With a sudden shudder, the mirror cracked, sending shards of glass cascading to the floor. Emily gasped, her trance broken, but it was too late. The mirror's curse had already taken hold. Her friends watched in horror as Emily's reflection slowly faded, leaving behind an empty shell of a girl, devoid of life and soul. In the aftermath, the town of Willowbrook fell silent. The mansion remained untouched, a grim reminder of the darkness that lurked within. Locals spoke in hushed tones, warning visitors to steer clear of the cursed mirror and its malevolent powers. And so, the legend of the mirror's reflection endured, a cautionary tale passed down through generations, a reminder that some mysteries are best left undisturbed, lest they unleash horrors beyond imagining. Story number two, the ghost ship. The sea was calm that night, the moon casting a silver path across the water. Captain William stood at the helm of the Calypso, his ship slicing through the ocean with ease. It was his last voyage before retirement, and he was determined to make it a smooth one. As the hours passed, a thick fog rolled in, shrouding the Calypso in an eerie silence. The crew whispered of ghost ships and lost souls, tales passed down through generations of sailors. But Captain William scoffed at such superstitions. He trusted his navigation skills above all else. Suddenly, a faint light pierced the fog. A ship appeared, its hull rotten and sails tattered. The crew gasped in disbelief. It was the legendary Siren's Call, a ghost ship said to lure sailors to their doom. Panic gripped the crew as they watched the spectral vessel draw closer, guided by an unseen force. Captain William's voice boomed over the chaos, ordering the crew to stay calm and ready the cannons. But before they could react, tendrils of mist enveloped the Calypso, blurring the lines between reality and nightmare. Footsteps echoed on the deck, though no living soul could be seen. Whispers filled the air, unintelligible yet filled with malice. Shadows danced in the corners of the sailor's vision, each movement a silent threat. Below deck, young Henry dared to venture alone. 
His curiosity outweighed his fear, leading him deeper into the heart of the ship. The air grew colder with each step, his breath forming misty clouds in the darkness. A faint glow ahead beckoned him, a lantern swinging eerily as if carried by an invisible hand. Henry's heart pounded as he approached the source of the light. The lantern floated midair, casting flickering shadows on the walls. And there, standing before him, was a figure clad in tattered clothes, its face obscured by a hooded cloak. Who are you? Henry managed to choke out, his voice barely a whisper. The figure turned slowly, its eyes two orbs of piercing blue light. Lost souls, it murmured, the words echoing in Henry's mind. Henry stumbled backward, terror gripping his soul. He raced back to the deck, desperate to warn the crew. But the Calypso had changed. The once sturdy ship now creaked and groaned like a living beast. The ghostly siren's call loomed ever closer, its crew of specters poised to claim new souls. Captain William rallied his men, their weapons drawn as they prepared for battle. Cannons roared, blasting holes in the fog-shrouded abyss. But the ghostly ship seemed impervious, its spectral form swirling like smoke in the wind. The battle raged through the night, the cries of the crew drowned out by the howling wind. Desperation fueled their fight, each man determined to defy the fate that awaited them. But the siren's call was relentless, its haunting melody luring them deeper into the abyss. As dawn broke, the fog lifted, revealing the aftermath of the battle. The Calypso stood battered but victorious, the ghostly siren's call vanishing into the mist once more. Captain William surveyed the damage, his heart heavy with loss. Among the fallen was young Henry, his lifeless body cradled in the arms of his comrades. His face bore a look of peace, as if he had found solace in the midst of chaos. Captain William bowed his head, honoring the bravery of the boy who dared to confront the unknown. And so, the Calypso sailed on, its crew forever haunted by the memory of that fateful night. Legends spoke of the ghost ship that crossed their path, a tale of courage, sacrifice, and the enduring spirit of those who dared to sail the haunted seas. Story number 3, The Midnight Train The town of Ravenwood was nestled deep within the woods, isolated from the bustling city life. Its only connection to the outside world was a railway that cut through the dense forest, carrying passengers during the day and freight at night. But there was something eerie about the last train that passed through Ravenwood, the Midnight Train. Legend had it that the Midnight Train carried more than just cargo. It was said to be haunted, its passengers lost souls who never reached their destination. Stories circulated among the townsfolk about strange occurrences whenever the train rolled into the station at the stroke of midnight. Some claimed to have seen ghostly figures peering out of the windows, their faces twisted in agony. Others spoke of disembodied voices whispering words of warning to those who dared to listen. Despite the warnings, curiosity got the better of James, a local historian fascinated by the town's dark past. One moonless night, he decided to investigate the mystery of the midnight train. Armed with a flashlight and a sense of trepidation, he made his way to the abandoned station where the train was due to arrive. As the clock struck twelve, the ground began to tremble faintly. A distant whistle echoed through the silence, growing louder with each passing second. James felt a chill run down his spine as the headlights of the approaching train pierced through the darkness. The midnight train had arrived. The air around James turned icy cold as the train screeched to a halt in front of him. The doors creaked open slowly, as if beckoning him to come aboard. Heart pounding, James hesitated for a moment before stepping onto the eerily deserted platform. Inside, the train appeared deserted, save for a few flickering lights casting eerie shadows along the empty seats. James wandered through the carriages, his footsteps echoing loudly in the silence. He couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of unseen eyes following his every move. Suddenly, a cold gust of wind slammed a door shut behind him, trapping him in darkness. Panic rising, James fumbled for his flashlight, its beam revealing rows of empty seats stretching into infinity. Just as he began to fear he was truly alone, James heard a faint whisper, a voice calling his name from the far end of the carriage. He turned shining his light into the gloom, but saw nothing. 
The voice grew louder, more urgent, urging him to turn back before it was too late. Heart pounding, James stumbled forward, each step heavier than the last. Shadows danced around him, taking on sinister shapes that seemed to move of their own accord. The air grew thick with a suffocating sense of dread as James realized he was no longer alone on the train. Faces began to materialize in the darkness, pale, ghostly faces contorted in pain and despair. They reached out to him with spectral hands, their eyes pleading for release from their eternal torment. James recoiled in horror, his mind struggling to comprehend the unearthly sight before him. Desperate to escape, James ran towards the nearest exit, only to find himself back where he started. The train had become a labyrinth of endless corridors, each one leading him deeper into the heart of darkness. The whispers grew louder, mocking him with promises of salvation if only he would surrender to their embrace. In a last desperate bid for freedom, James smashed a window with his flashlight, the shards of glass shattering like a cry of defiance against the supernatural forces that held him captive. The train shuddered violently, as if in protest, but James didn't hesitate. With a final leap, he hurled himself through the broken window and tumbled onto the cold, hard ground outside. Gasping for breath, James staggered to his feet and looked back at the midnight train, now receding into the distance. Its ghostly passengers stared back at him through the shattered window, their silent screams echoing in his mind. He knew then that he had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death, that he had glimpsed the true horror lurking within the midnight train. From that night onward, James never spoke of his ordeal to anyone. But every time the clock struck midnight, he would hear the distant whistle of the midnight train, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of reality. Story number four. The Demon Possessed Dog. In the quaint town of Ravenwood, nestled deep within the misty woods, a chilling legend lurked among the locals. They whispered of a demon-possessed dog that prowled the outskirts, its eyes glowing like embers in the dark. Few dared to venture beyond the safety of their homes after sunset, for the dog was said to prey on those foolish enough to cross its path. One fateful autumn evening, Sarah, a spirited young woman with a penchant for adventure, decided to defy the warnings. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and her curiosity, she ventured into the woods where the dog was rumored to haunt. The wind whispered through the branches, carrying with it an eerie chill that sent shivers down her spine. As Sarah ventured deeper into the woods, the familiar sounds of civilization faded into silence. The only company she had was the faint rustling of leaves underfoot and the occasional hoot of an owl. She began to feel a growing sense of unease, a primal instinct warning her of impending danger. Suddenly, a low growl shattered the silence. Sarah froze, her heart pounding in her chest. She slowly turned, her flashlight trembling in her grip, illuminating a pair of glowing red eyes in the shadows. The demon-possessed dog stood before her, its fur bristling with malevolent energy. It snarled, revealing sharp, gleaming teeth that seemed to glint with an otherworldly light. Fear surged through Sarah's veins as she backed away slowly, her mind racing for a means of escape. But the dog moved with an unnerving agility, circling her with predatory intent. Its eyes bore into hers, filled with an ancient malice that sent a chill to her very core. With a sudden burst of speed, the dog lunged forward, its jaws snapping shut just inches from Sarah's trembling form. She stumbled backward, narrowly avoiding the deadly strike. Desperation fueled her movements as she scrambled over fallen branches and dense undergrowth the relentless pursuit of the demon-possessed dog echoing through the night. Hours passed like an eternity as Sarah ran, her lungs burning with exertion and terror. The forest seemed to stretch endlessly around her, a labyrinth of shadows and unseen threats. Yet, no matter how fast she ran or how far she fled, the relentless presence of the dog persisted, its haunting growls echoing through the darkness. Exhausted and on the brink of despair, Sarah stumbled upon an old, dilapidated cabin hidden deep within the heart of the woods. With trembling hands, she pushed open the creaking door and stumbled inside, collapsing onto the cold, dirt-covered floor. The cabin offered little comfort, its walls adorned with faded paintings and cobwebs that whispered tales of forgotten horrors. As Sarah caught her breath, 
she realized with a sinking dread that the demon-possessed dog had not relented in its pursuit. Its haunting growls reverberated through the cabin walls, drawing closer with each passing moment. She knew she had nowhere left to run, trapped in the heart of the dog's domain. Just as hope began to fade, a faint glimmer caught Sarah's eye, a rusted trap nestled in the corner of the cabin, its jaws gaping open like a hungry maw. With a surge of determination, she grabbed the trap and positioned it near the door, her hands trembling with a mix of fear and resolve. Moments later, the demon-possessed dog burst through the cabin door with a primal snarl, its eyes blazing with feral fury. Sarah held her breath as the creature stalked toward her, its predatory instincts driving it forward. With a sudden lunge, the dog stepped into the trap, its agonized yelp echoing through the cabin as the rusty jaws snapped shut around its leg. Relief washed over Sarah as she watched the dog struggle against the trap, its malevolent energy finally subdued. The forest outside grew quiet once more, the haunting presence of the demon-possessed dog vanishing into the night. As dawn broke over Ravenwood, Sarah emerged from the cabin, weary yet victorious. She knew that the legend of the demon-possessed dog would linger among the townsfolk, a cautionary tale of the dangers that lurked within the shadows. But for Sarah, it was a reminder of her own strength and resilience in the face of unimaginable terror. And so, the woods of Ravenwood fell silent once more, the tale of the demon-possessed dog etched into the fabric of its haunted history, a testament to the enduring power of fear and the courage to defy it. Story number 5. The Midnight Truck. The night was thick with darkness, the kind that seemed to seep into your bones and chill you to the core. It was a night like any other in the small town of Ravenwood, where the streets were quiet and the only sound was the occasional rustling of leaves in the cold wind. But this night, something sinister lurked in the shadows, something that would haunt the residents for years to come. It all began with a rumor. A whisper passed from one trembling soul to another. They spoke of a midnight truck, an old, battered thing that prowled the streets when the moon was at its peak. They said it appeared out of nowhere, its headlights piercing through the fog, casting eerie shadows that danced along the walls of houses. Nobody knew where the truck came from or who drove it. Some claimed it was driven by the restless spirit of a long-dead driver, condemned to roam the earth for eternity. Others believed it to be a harbinger of doom, a sign that something terrible was about to happen. Sarah, a young woman with a penchant for curiosity, heard the stories like everyone else. But unlike the others, she couldn't resist the lure of the unknown. She decided to investigate the mystery of the midnight truck herself, determined to uncover the truth behind the chilling tales. One fateful night, Sarah waited patiently by her bedroom window, watching the clock tick closer to midnight. The town was silent, enveloped in an oppressive stillness that made her skin crawl. And then, she saw it. A flicker of headlights in the distance, growing brighter with each passing moment. Heart pounding, Sarah slipped out into the cool night air, her breath forming ghostly puffs in front of her face. She followed the sound of the truck's engine, a low, menacing rumble that seemed to echo in her very soul. The streets were empty, the houses dark and foreboding as she trailed the truck through the winding roads of Ravenwood. As she drew nearer, Sarah noticed something strange about the truck. It was dented and scratched, as if it had been through countless horrors. Its windows were tinted black, concealing whatever lay within. But what chilled her to the bone were the whispers she heard, faint and ghostly, as if carried on the wind itself. Driven by both fear and curiosity, Sarah pressed on, determined to uncover the truth. She followed the truck to the edge of town, where the road disappeared into the dense forest that bordered Ravenwood. The truck came to a sudden stop, its headlights illuminating a clearing ahead. Heart racing, Sarah approached cautiously, her footsteps barely making a sound on the forest floor. And then, she saw it. The driver's seat was empty, the engine silent. But what caught her attention was the cargo. The back of the truck was filled with old, weathered coffins, their lids closed tight as if holding something unspeakable inside. A cold shiver ran down Sarah's spine as she realized the truth. The midnight truck was no ordinary vehicle. It was a vessel for the dead, a transport for souls that should have found peace but were condemned to wander the earth instead. The whispers grew louder, desperate and mournful, 
as if begging for release from their eternal torment. Suddenly, a chill wind swept through the clearing, extinguishing the truck's headlights in an instant. Darkness enveloped Sarah, swallowing her whole as she stood frozen in terror. And then, she heard it, a voice, soft and sorrowful, echoing through the night. Run, it whispered, a warning laced with despair. Sarah turned and fled, her heart pounding in her ears as she raced back towards town. Behind her, the truck roared to life once more, its headlights piercing through the darkness like the eyes of a vengeful spirit. She could hear it gaining on her, the engine growling like a hungry beast as it pursued her through the twisting streets of Ravenwood. Just as Sarah thought she couldn't run any longer, she stumbled into the safety of her own yard, gasping for breath. She dared not look back, fearing what she might see lurking in the shadows. The truck's engine faded into the distance, leaving behind an eerie silence that hung heavy in the night air. From that night on, Sarah never spoke of her encounter with the midnight truck. But she knew deep down that it was real, that something malevolent had crossed into her world from the realm of the dead. And as long as Ravenwood stood, the legend of the midnight truck would haunt its residents, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of reality.